Well, this is a brief history of the development of the of this now called Vienna Psychoanalytical Association, which was formally found in 1947 as Vienna Working Party for Depth Psychology. At that time, Vienna still lay in ruins in the aftermath of World War II, and the National Socialist's reign of terror had just ended. In Vienna, psychoanalysis had been annihilated nearly completely, even more radically than in Germany. From the more than 100 psychoanalysts of the original Vienna Psychoanalytic Society, found by Frey, only three members had stayed in Vienna until the end of war. And this small circle around August Eichhorn resumed its teaching activities in 1946 and started to rebuild the Vienna Psychoanalytic Society. In 1942, during the war, Igor Caruso, a Russian psychologist in his late twenties, a young man, came to Vienna as a refugee and aimed at joining the group around August Eichhorn. Somehow he was uh, unsuccessful, maybe due to several reasons such as his close relationships and connections to National Socialist and Catholic psychiatrists, psychologists and philosophers. There was a small group who was uh, who used uh, to discuss psychoanalysis. Um, but uh, originally Caruso had been strongly influenced by ideas which, according to a common belief, I think, at that time, psychoanal psychoanalysis had to be cleansed of, how the Nazis called it, all the destructive Jewish influence. Just as a side note, this could be considered in itself as a process of highly destructive projection. Well, however, in this mindset, the Vienna Working Party for Depth Psychology, as it was called, was found. During the 1950s, att attempts were made to merge psychoanalytic theory with Christian values in reference to Heidegger, Kierkegaard, von, Weiz von Weizsäcker, as well as C.G. Jung, who, as you know, also held the view of a superior Germanic soul. There's no doubt, the early stages in the development of this psychoanalytic group were tainted by anti-Semitic and Catholic reservations in regards to psychoanalytic thought. This was certainly in accordance with the post-war atmosphere in many intellectual and social circles in Vienna. Time went by and in the early 1960s, when um, a strong political discussion in the society uh, started, um, Caruso tuned towards contemporary intellectual trends. He was interested in Marx, in Marcuse and the Frankfurt School. And now these ideas were merged with psychoanalytic theories. And uh, that earned the Institute the reputation of teaching a more modern and political engaged psychoanalysis in difference to the strong orthodox psychoanalysis of the Vienna Psychoanalytical Society. Under the name of Personale Psychoanalyse, what means um, 
psychoanalysis of the person. Um, a form of psychoanalytic treatment was practiced that put less focus on setting abstinence or technical neutrality, preferring a sort of collegial discussion that abandons the concept of uh, high frequency treatment and avoids intense regression. This was the idea. The, the guiding idea was to enable the patient to develop autonomously in the course of the treatment. Well, when the working party's founder Caruso left, left Vienna for a job at the university in Salzburg, the institute's stance through the influence of uh, single members, um, the stance towards psychoanalysis changed. This trend is or was further influenced by the members' growing relationship with colleagues from the uh, psychoanalytic society and with an increasingly intensive critical engagement with psychoanalytic literature. So at the beginning of the 1980s the Institute returned to practicing Freudian psychoanalysis and the religious, philosophical and political influences diminished, well, at least on the surface. Well, as the years went by, every move that put increasing focus on psychoanalytic theories, more and more members left the Institute. Finally, only members who were interested in Freudian psych psychoanalysis um, remained within the society. The working party increasingly took over the training standards of the IPA and finally, as a sign, the institute's name was changed to Vienna Working Party for Psychoanalysis, no longer depth psychology. During this phase in the late 1980s, several members started to engage in the history of their institute at a time when the whole country was beginning to confront itself with Austria's participation in the National Socialist regime due to the internationally discussed Waldheim affair. Waldheim, Austrian president, was accused to uh, be involved in uh, uh, war crime in, in, at the Balkan. Uh, similarly to the social upheaval caused by this in general society, internal tensions also grew within the institute. And it was like a traumatic shock when a colleague published in 2007, very late, her inquiry of Caruso's work at the hospital named Spiegelgrund during 1942, in his first year in Vienna, where disabled children under the program of children euthanasia had been murdered. So, with the support of members of the Vienna Psychoanalytic Society and the president of the IPA at that time, Otto Kernberg, the Institute's ambitions to become a member of the IPA was encouraged. In 2000, admissions procedures commenced with the establishment of a study group and these efforts uh, 
culminated in 2013 with the re recognition of the Vienna Working Party as a component society, now called Vienna Psychoanalytical Association. With this approximation to the IPA, the sparse connections to the um, Vienna Psychoanalytical Society uh, that had started in the 1980s and intensified in the face of fruitful cooperation began between the two, the two institutes. Together, the Vienna Psychological Academy was founded, a publicly accessible institute for applied psychoanalysis that has grown into a highly successful institute, offering a broad range of activities. Well, in a final step, the two institutes decided to transfer their societies to a shared location. And currently, a project is under preparation that will embed psychoanalysis in a university setting. Now, for over 50 years, the Psychoanalytic Society and the Vienna Working Party for psychoanalysis developed separately due to ideological and scientific differences. It is easy to imagine that the process of approachment involved a great amount of heated debates and conflicts in both of the societies and at some points our institute was even, even at risk of breaking apart. However, today most members value the close cooperation between both institutes and shared projects are considered to be an enrichment that ensure a secure path of psychoanalysis in the future, hopefully. Okay.